Gucci everybody, it's AJ here again, and today we're going to learn about how to make a awesome functioning Kaboom linked list in C. Now, you may be saying, well, I know how to make a linked list in C. Whatever I want to link together, such as a structure, which is what mainly you're going to link together in C, I just include a pointer that can point to another structure so I can keep pointing to different things in my linked list. Well, that is a pretty good thought. But the thing that's kind of really burdensome is that what if you kind of wanted a de facto linked list that you could use for any kind of structure and that you wouldn't have to incorporate into every structure you made. Now, that may seem impossible. You may be thinking, oh, that's not possible in C. You know, C doesn't have the capabilities of doing that. Well, there is a pretty darn good way to make a linked list in C that I want to show you guys and that I think will be awesome to show the world. So without further ado, we're going to make a linked list in C that really is independent on what structure you're making. You just need to make a little change to your structure, and then you can insert any structure into this linked list that we're going to make pretty easily. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is this linked is going to be a doubly linked list, meaning that it has a previous node and a next node. So I'm able to travel backwards, and I'm tr able to travel traveled forward forwards. I'm also going to have a head and tail node, which are called sentinel nodes. And what this does is this gets rid of a lot of error checking. For instance, when I initialize my head and tail nodes, I'm going to be able to, you know, just set the head equal to the tail. And then if the head is equal to tail, that's an empty list. So if I ever get to the tail, I know I can't go forward which is pretty important. And if I know I get to the tail, I can't go backward. So it's a nice way to arrow check or know if I'm at the end or the beginning of the list. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a struct and I'm going to call it, it's going to be my struct. I'm going to make it my struct list. And my struct list is going to have two things. It's going to have a pointer. No, it's not going to have a pointer. It's going to contain the head and the tail nodes. And my, my head and my tail nodes are just the same as regular nodes, except they're going to have nothing in them. So I'm going to have a struct, and I'm going to call it list lm. And I'm going to call it head. And I'm going to call it struct list lm tail. So there you go. Now I just need my, I have my list, which has my head and my tail, but I, now I need to define what the nodes are, what the list elements are. So I'm going to make a structure. And I'm going to call it list lm, defining what I just defined in the bottom. So there we go. Uh, remember the semicolon when you're declaring the structure? I'm going to do struct. And now this structure is going to contain two pointers that point to other elements. So struct list lm. And then it's going to be a pointer. Next. And then struct list lm previous. Okay, and I spelled struct wrong. It's giving me errors. Okay, so there you go. So that is the basic way of how of how we're going to structure our linked list. We've got our nodes here, and we've got our list structure, which contains which contains our head and our tail, which we can start to search through the linked list for deletion and insertion. And now also the very power of this linked list derives from something that I've already typed up here, which I've just scrolled down to, called the list entry macro. And what this list entry macro does is it's going to do very important things here. As you can see, in our list element method, I don't have a pointer to the structure of whatever you want to contain in the linked list. I only have something to the previous and next. And that's what we want. We want some kind of modularity or ability to um, decouple things. You want loose coupling. So we want to be able to take apart you know, the list and the object that we want to put in the list. So that's what we're going to do here. And so what the list entry method is going to do, it's pretty complicated here, it's going to take the list element, it's going to take the node, the pointer of the node that you want, the structure you want out of your list, and the member, which we'll get to a second, inside your structure. And what this does is basically it takes a node and turns it into the structure that you want with this macro. Because I'm going to go on a little bit of detour, just explanation here, C in memory is just described as a huge array. It's just described as all these blocks of memory. And you can think of it as just one huge array, billions of blocks 
each of them, each block represents a byte, you know, one byte, and you can put multiple blocks together to make more bytes. And so when I declare another struct, such as struct, I'm going to make a struct called person, and that's going to have an int age, char first initial, and we'll make, we'll give it a height too. And so when I declare a struct person, the if I made the struct empty, like I will when I cut this out, that doesn't take up any memory because there's nothing stored in the struct. What structs actually allow you to do in C is they allow you a way of knowing where all your information starts. So as again, as I showed you in this big array here, when I have a structure, I'm basically saying, okay, I am going to put all this information in one place side by side. So literally when I, you know, malloc a struct person object, it says, okay, I'm going to put down, I'm going to make a block for age, which is four bytes. And then right after that block, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to make um, a block for my char f initial, which is one byte. And then I'm going to make room for my float height. So it puts all that together, and then struct is just a basic way to point. It's just a basic way to point to either height, the age, first initial, or height very easily, and so you know where that is located in memory. And so that's pretty cool. And so the reason, because I explained all that, is because that is what this list entry is doing. The last thing I need to do here is do a struct. Is is do the last thing is I need to tell this structure that it's a part of the list element, it's a part of going to be part of a list by containing a list element. And I'm going to name it list element. And so what it's going to do is it's going to take the node in the link list, the struct that I want, which is going to be struct person, and then the member of the element right here, the element, and it's going to basically take the offset of where this element is in memory and go, you know, mine, so it can tell that from the person object, it's off by a certain number of bytes. In our instance, four, one, and eight, which is 13. It's going to say, okay, you're four bytes off the beginning of the structure person object. So then it's going to go minus 13. So then it's going to be pointing at the beginning of the struct person object, which happens to be, you know, the first of the four bytes of age. But you can think of that. So now that I have that, but now that I'm at the beginning of the structure, I can easily use my dot syntax or my arrow syntax to point at these other structures very easily because that's what the dot structure and the arrow structure are doing for you. They're really figuring out the offsets, which this macro is doing for you. Okay, so now that I've done that, I am going to start defining some methods in the next section. Okay, guys, so now you can see here, I want to show you guys I'm in. I was in ctutorial.h right here, and now I'm in ctutorial.c, and so I've included ctutorial.h, so I have all those structures. I've also included standard IO and assert, because assert statements are good for error checking. So now we're going to make our first method here, and what we're going to...